back then, it was the whole of the dance music scene, certainly in the UK, was run by happy evangelical amateurs. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Nobody, it wasn't really about, nobody was thinking about making money. The good people, any of the people you kind of met, like, you know, people like Sasha and their, their club, it was all about, look, we've got this place, we can play house music at people and everyone's coming, isn't it brilliant? And come and play live. And, yeah, of course. And, you know, that was great. We kind of ended up hooking up with loads of different people yeah. around the country, didn't we? Like going yeah. to Belfast to meet David Holmes and things like that. And, Everyone had this same kind of enthusiasm and come on, look, at, look what's happening. It was really trying to create something. It was these little puddles of this kind of thing that would turn into rave, sort of just growing out of, out of what was, you know, a nightclub culture before that was pretty much, you know, sort of bad pop disco music and get beaten up at the end, you know. And sticky carpets. Sticky carpets. Well, to be fair, raves had sticky carpets. Don't, <laughs> was just don't, don't pretend was anyway, anything yeah, else, yeah. you know. <laughs> but, you know, it was... All of a sudden, it was a unification of people being friendly to each other and boys and girls talking to each other and it not being... There not being this kind of tension that used to go on in the... the you know, nightclubs yeah, used to be frightening places before. Because before of that. ecstasy, right? Yeah, yeah. Ecstasy, and, yeah, and dance music, I say. Yeah, ecstasy you know. dance. Let's yeah, not yeah. just blame the drugs. Yeah, but it's not blaming it. It's like a good thing that it came along. So, what was the first, your first, both of you, your first experience of kind of, well, a rave, I guess, or a, a party during the kind of acid house era? Because you you grew up in Seven Oaks. Didn't yeah, you? local. It was local stuff actually, which was good because that was the DIY ethic, though. That's the fun aspect about the whole kind of rave thing. Is people did think. Have you heard this music? That was the first thing, hearing the music and thinking, oh, that's good. And then, where'd, where'd you go and hear that? Well, you don't. And then, sort of, the people, you know, people used to do parties in Seven Oaks and sort of Tunbridge. Yeah. There was a big culture of um, sort of doing squat parties and in the woods parties and things like that. And so, the guys that were DJing at those things, you know, they were obviously kind of alternative DJs. They weren't playing in the sort of horrible mecca nightclubs. So they were into house music and rare groove, and it just went from kind of public enemies through house into acid house. And that's the sort of things that, that were going on. I mean, the Grasshopper was, uh, you know, I think it was called Roadblock, the club there, yeah. went from a kind of rare groove club on the border of Kent and Surrey into a full-on acid house thing on a Thursday night. Really cheap, like £2 to get in. Free right. if you go in before 10. I used you know, to go to it was like it was it was brilliant, but these these things were just springing up on their own. I used to go to warehouse parties, and it was before house. They used to be playing um, like electro and hip hop, and you know proper scratches and all this sort of stuff. Sort of rare groove, that kind of thing. But yeah, and all that. And um, then that sort of then there was the mutual waste parties, which they were fantastic. Yeah, they were brilliant. That artisan they? lot. I mean, they've turned into what they call now Arcadia lot. That's all the okay. kids or the sons or the children of. The mutual ways. So there are artisans. They squatted this big, huge warehouse at the back of King's Cross. I mean, it's probably a hotel now or something like that. But you'd go through a little door, Fiverr. You get in and you go over this rickety thing, and then they'd have like this. It'd be amazing. It'd be like this uh, weeping willow from, like you know, when you shave a piece of wood or metal and it goes all curls up. So it'd be like this weeping willow made out of metal and all like this. They'd have, they'd have a dumper truck, like, changed into a wool, woolly mammoth. It's all Mad Max shit. <laughs> and they'd have, like, punk band over in the corner and people firing and juggling, and, you know, and all this. It was like, what? like a scene in the movies, you know, really, really good. And then in the corner, they'd have a little room, a big smiley face, and we just saw it, it was like, like, flashing lights, and go in there, and it's like, you're off. And then they had Clink Street, didn't they, down in... Uh, yeah. Who did Clink Street? Clink Street was amazing. Park, I mean, we Clink. went there one, one time. Clink Street, First yeah. time I'd ever been it's to first a London kind of it's rave. Right and there were all these kind of real casual looking guys that I just thought, oh, shit, we're going to get the crap beaten up out of us. They were doing a conga, chanting ecstasy and <laughs> smiling at everyone. And it's like, what the f <laughs> <fuck was happened? laughs> And it, that's where my real, OK, something's changing around here. But it's like went to the bar. <laughs> Ribena or Something water. Up. Ribena or water. It's like mental. I can't buy alcohol. You know, it was like. Great. This was, yeah, I know. It was, it was, and that was Mr. C and um, Evil Eddie Richards playing yeah. all this Detroit techno. It was amazing. So, so when, when did but, the. No, sorry, that was. I was just saying, that's where we had torch glasses, you know, that thing. Like, you're in smoke and you go, what the fuck? I can see trying to see a little LED, like a little thing like that. 
So then a mate of ours like came, you know, got, I've got these in New York, little plastic cheap things, like six dollars or something. And Space Age gifts, isn't it? We, yeah. uh, we found that out. Fourteen. So we used actually. to, I, I used to buy the frames and cut them out and strap mag lights to them, so we can actually see what we were doing, and that's how that all developed from hmm. those. Because all you need is smoke and strobes, really, and, and some music.